everyone. I um, <clears throat> can't talk too much today, uh, but I just wanted to share that today is Thursday. I'm filming this video day after the private opening happened and it was lovely to meet the mayor of the of the town and meeting other um, local artists and yeah it was a lovely event and i do have a few pictures which uh, weren't great quality because of the lighting they were taken by someone um, at the exhibition and yeah so I will try and do a vlog to kind of document that experience but on the evening when I got home it was um, it started snowing and it was quite cold and I came down with something I don't know whether it's COVID or not just yet haven't tested but I'm not feeling great and um, my throat is in like in agony so I'm struggling to talk and I thought um, what would be a good video for today is basically uh, swatching. This is something I was meaning to do for a while because I have now a total of 25 acrylic inks including a white which I won't be swatching and whenever I'm working with acrylic inks I just want that like perfect color that I have in mind but because I have so many now it's difficult to navigate around them so I want to have a big swatch sheet of large swatches in my studio so that I can refer to them easily and I'm planning to do the same thing for my oil sticks as well so do let me know um, if you are interested in the to see the swatches for those as well so I have a number of different, I think three different types of acrylic inks here. I've got the FWs by Dalleroni, which is uh, the artist grade. They also have a System 3, which is student grade. Um, I have a few colors by uh, that range as well. And then the third one is the Amsterdam acrylic ink. And a couple of colors are absolutely gorgeous. So I want to share those. I won't be able to talk any more than that, so I think from now onwards I'll probably either put some music on um, or, I don't know, I might do a voiceover <laughs> at some point later. Um, but yeah, I hope you're well and um, I hope you will enjoy this uh, swatching media. Before we start, I'm going to use this Jackson's Raven 30 brush, which I will link down below. So we'll start with the yellows, going to pinks, then moving on to greens and blues. And then I will do the neutrals on this side. Before I started, I mixed all of them up because that's a thing with acrylic inks, especially if they have white in them. So let me show you. So this one here, it's very hard to mix them up. I find that after a while, um, you get a slightly different color to what it's supposed to be. When they don't have that much white, uh, they mix up a lot faster. This one, this one actually does have a white PW6, but it seems to mix up perfectly fine. Um, this one, however, is very, very stubborn, and I feel like I would need to go with a like a metal scoop or something to stir up the bottom of it. And um, the pipettes of them are, are glass, I think. I heard somewhere that they started making them plastic in the more recent um, bottles, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, so you need to mix them up properly. And being the glass pipettes, I wouldn't really put any metal balls in there to help the shaking of it. So this is the voice over me and I'm recording it probably a few days after I actually filmed the video. So we're starting with Dalaroni System 3 Lemon Yellow. This is an opaque color and even though there are a few opaques in my collection I find that I still can get them to look fairly transparent because I do use them as I would use watercolor and they create these beautiful backgrounds and quite literally look like watercolor. 
and in their most opaque and uh, pigmented state without that much water then yes the opaque colors would look quite opaque next color is amsterdam Aze yellow lemon when i was first purchasing this color i was hoping more for a chartreuse hint uh, but i would say it's more of a transparent version of the previous lemon yellow and it has maybe a little bit more zinginess to it as opposed to the system 3 lemon yellow being quite uh, sort of like buttery really then we have third color Dalaroni FW brilliant yellow and followed by Dalaroni FW yellow ochre so again this can be quite opaque uh, but you can you know add quite a bit of water to it to dilute it next color is flame orange also fw it's a gorgeous color one of the must-haves it's uh it's got a great vibrancy to it quite transparent and i find the color that it kind of changes to or um you can you can have different shades of the same color it's uh, really interesting to me personally i adore those colors similar to antelope brown that we will see later it has loads of dimension to it starting with pinks i only have two pinks in this collection and this is the process magenta great color to use with uh, mixing other colors and it's I would say on a transparent side. It is quite bright. It comes off quite bright on the um, video. Next color was fluoro, so fluorescent pink, and it's quite literally a neon pink. Very hard to show on camera. It just glows off the page. Dalaroni FW Olive Green, which I like to kind of mix a little bit more uh, to get it to look more like olive green then we have a dark green which is another bright transparent color great for mixes and marine blue so this marine blue i have a broken uh, pipette which is the glass one and that's why i don't recommend using metal balls in there because i can imagine it would just uh, very easily break those fragile pipettes next color is fairly similar but it just doesn't have that depth that you can see in the corner there of the marine blue and it's the turquoise blue mm -hmm. then we have process cyan yes cyan and that is actually not as cyan as i would imagine it to be it's more of a sky blue gorgeous color has a little bit of opacity to it if needed so again can be transparent uh, or built up next one is indigo and um, it's a beautiful dark color and there just added a little bit too much water and i was wondering why it's looking so light um, and i uh, confused it for a second and swatched it again not realizing it was the same color uh, so yeah both of those swatches are indigo and it's actually good to see that you can get a lot darker color in the biggest swatch next to it then we have paints gray one of my top favorite colors um, out of this line and in general across any medium be it watercolor pencils etc it's uh gorgeous in the sense that again it can be built up to a very very intense color similar to that marine blue and then it can be also watered out then we're going back to amsterdam and it's warm gray beautiful color on its own from the bottle has of course a bit of opacity to it because there uh, is white i'm pretty sure i don't have the bottle next to me right now um, but the next two colors have white in there, which is Dalaroni System 3 Portrait Pink, and it has been since renamed to Peach Pink. And then we have Dalaroni FW Flesh Tint, 
Now it is called something like flesh tint Caucasian uh, or again peach pink. Both colors are slightly different, although they're supposed to be like similar, but I like both of them. The first one is more beige and the next one or the, the second one is more peachy. Then we have Rose Sienna, another one must have color and it's Dalaroni FW and then Dalaroni FW Antelope Brown, which is the color I mentioned before. It's gorgeous. The swatch actually didn't do it much justice because it can be very, very interesting in a way, almost like pigment separating. Then we're coming to Burnt Umber by Dalaroni FW. It's coming off a lot more orange and warm uh, on the swatch than it is looking right now when it has dried. So there might be quite a bit of a color shift to this color. And then we have Sepia, which is a bit of a boring color on its own, especially once it dries. Kind of looks a bit flat, but it's great for mixing. Then we have Red Earth, Dalaroni FW which is quite opaque if you want to have a solid color but looks super pretty pink uh, when watered out and then we have burnt sienna both by dalaroni system 3 and amsterdam what i wanted to point out is a couple of my favorite colors that i love using it would be rose sienna by dalaroni fw Dalaroni FW Flame Orange is a gorgeous color, you can't see it, to that one there. And uh, what else? Payne's Grey, Antelope Brown. This color was introduced by Laura Horn in one of her earlier classes that I've taken. And then Burnt Umber, another great color. And also quite love the Burnt Sienna by Dalaroni System 3. Uh, one thing to point out about the Amsterdam. You may not know, but these inks actually are made by Royal Talents, which is the same brand as this sketchbook that I have been using for my um, botanical art. <clears throat> So I've got two colors by, no, three colors by this brand and one of them seems to be a problematic one. So I've got the Azure Yellow Lemon and I also have the Warm Grey and then finally this color Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna out of the three seems to be going through the fibers of the paper and sort of doing this not very great looking bleeding through in a way and uh, none of the other inks or colors by fw do it and not even the other two i've noticed to do it but then they are quite light so i don't know whether it's the because it's a, the darkness of the color or whether there's something specific in this um, burnt sienna that does it but although i love the color I oftentimes can't use it on many of my papers because it does it on a number of different papers that I experienced. So uh, let me give you a little close up. Also, I think, so there's a portrait pink and there is a flash tint. One of the colors, I think it might have been, Actually, not sure, uh, but I'll put it in the title here somewhere. They have been renamed since, so the new bottles that come out, uh, you're likely to purchase with the new name, but it's the same color. And uh, the, the flesh tint or the portrait pink, one of them has been renamed into something peach, I think. Um, anyway, so let's have a little close up. It's quite dark outside. Uh, so I had to put my studio lights on, so I, I hope you still can see the colors really well. The colors here at the bottom are my favorite colors. It just, there's something about this color palette together with the Payne's Grey 
makes me quite happy. And it's so, so beautiful. So predominantly the way I use the other colours is by mixing. I don't think I hardly ever use them as they are out of bottle except for the paints grey. Uh, these colours as they come, I pretty much use them out of a bottle. Sepia, not so much as it is on its own, but I use it for mixing and neutralising other colours like we've done it in one of the recent videos. <clears throat> Uh, so I've been mixing this green up with the with a bit of sepia. So that originally was the uh, olive green and then I mixed it up. I don't have the examples to the other abstract paintings that I've now taken to the, um, to the exhibition. So I can't show them to you, but similar to that. So these are 24 colours plus the white, which I haven't swatched. Uh, but it's a great white to use as a opaque, kind of super opaque white colour. And um, I know that some artists really use, uh, love using it in their uh, work for like white detailing, going over other art supplies. Mm, I think Natasha Newton has uh, mentioned it a few times uh, as a great colour and then I've seen other artists as well uh, favourite to other acrylic inks. Okay, so that's as much talking as I can do for today. So I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless and you found it useful and maybe there's some colors that you can locate on this uh, swatch sheet that you would like to add to your collection. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.